Turkey and Portuguese. Obviously with the A, that's the female version and the, the Macaquino is the uh, male version. So already I kind of like, uh, like Frosto just out of principle. Well, both of these girls very skilled as far as their striking goes, obviously well-rounded. This fight immediately goes to the ground. And you would have to think in this situation here on the ground, the odds might go in the favor of Frosto. Well, you know, we got to take a minute and give it up for our uh, female matchmaker and the amateur matchmaker, Nicole Long, who has just really, along with yourself, pioneered women's MMA. And not just, oh, they're good looking, let's uh, see girls fight. No, these are legitimate mixed martial artists. They want the respect of just as the men get, and they are here to prove a point. And that point is, we want to be respected, we can fight, and do not sit here and go, ooh, girl fight. Oh, absolutely. These women uh, train just as hard. They're just as talented as the men. And uh, we are honored to, to really be one of the, the few promotions that's leading the charge in, in women's MMA. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be happier to have these two in the cage tonight. And, you know, when you say that they want to be treated as, like everyone else, sometimes they get the tougher road to hoe because typically their training partners are men. Absolutely. When you talk to a lot of the top females, that's the one common theme is that, hey, I prepare for this fight with a bunch of tough guys. And, uh, you know, most of the time it shows in the cage. Good elbows from Frosto on the bottom. And you can probably hear George Grigel. He's literally three feet from us here in, in the corner of Frosto, shouting out advice, encouraging her to continue to elbow. And Cummings dropping some bombs from the top. And also in her corner is uh, the world champ. Yeah. And you can tell that, uh, you know, Zoila and Steph are sisters. You can see that look of, I don't want to say concern, but uh, Zoila is certainly into this matchup. She's doing a great, great job. When she runs the legs high on the shoulders, trap her shoulders, pin them down. That's the very smart thing to do, and she gets out of it. Ooh. Wow. Great job by Cummings and an even better reversal from Frosto. That seemed deep for a second there. And you can tell the uh, decibel level here in the arena has gone up with these two in the cage. The fans are into this one. Nice right hand coming out of that. And Frosto working the legs right now, throw some strikes here. Good, good teep by Frosto. Well, and the entire women's MMA community, I can guarantee you, is tuning in for this one tonight. A lot of great press coming into this fight. And very, very impressive uh, with, with, with the strikes. You could tell, I know George Gurgel, he loves to stand and bang. Um, you could tell she really knows her Muay Thai, set up the leg kicks, beautiful. Well, and as good of a fighter that George Grigel is, he's probably a better trainer and a coach. I mean, the guy, uh, you know, is a pioneer when it comes to mixed martial arts. Obviously has made a great name for himself, but, you know, that's trickling down to his students in his camp. And you're seeing that with uh, Stephanie Frosto right now. Great first round. Here we go, we look at some action from uh, round number one, a round that went very quickly. Yes, <laughs> I, I don't know, uh, maybe I hit the, our personal timer wrong, I, maybe I hit it late, I'm not sure, but uh, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna see what went on right there. They're, they're saying right now it's only, at least George is informing his person, it's only a three minute round, but it should be five. 
Yeah, I, this is uh, news to me here. And obviously with the sport being new in West Virginia, there's a bit of confusion here. But uh, my understanding, these should be three five-minute rounds. But nonetheless, they made the decision to go three rounds. Or three-minute rounds, excuse me. And Cummings able to get the takedown. Now she's got to deal with the guard of Stephanie Frosto. And again with the elbows from the bottom. She's doing a good job. Got the... Uh, her left heel on her hip. And what I'm impressed with most about these ladies is that they are both climbing each other's back, pinning down the shoulders, preventing any real, real damage from devastating strikes being rained down. Yeah, for those of you that tuned into the weigh-ins last night, too, a little side note, there's certainly no love loss between these two. I didn't hear a lot of trash talking, but you can tell from the stare down, there was uh, some intensity. Right now, Cummings is in the half guard of, uh, of Frosto, and she. Uh, this is a great place to strike. You and I harp on this almost every time somebody ends up in half guard. It's Absolutely. A and a lot of pure grapplers, when they're on the bottom, they like to get into half guard because there's a lot of sweeps and so on and so forth. However, if you drop your hips, MMA is obviously way different than pure grappling. You add those strikes. It's a whole new ball game, no doubt about it. Cummings oh, right now doing right a to lot the back of, of the damage. Head, but right to the back of the head. And she's smart, she's burying her head there. Well, Frosto right here in her corner. And they're gonna, they're gonna take, he, Big Dan's gonna take a point. He had already warned her and she repeatedly, yep. Back of the head. Yeah, that's a point deduction. And this fight, as close as it is, that could be huge. And Cummings not arguing it. I think uh, I think she knows she made a mistake there. Well, we saw it earlier in the evening where you know uh, Big Dan just took away a point because there was three uh, strikes in a row by Josh Stansberry to the back of the head. This time he even warned her. He said, "Hang on, because you're hitting the back of the head." And and very intelligently, Stephanie was able to put her head down and say, "Nope, nope, we're not dealing with this." Cummings with. As schooled as she is in her striking, she is uh, she is certainly looking for that takedown. Maybe she she feels that she's got a bigger advantage on the ground. Well, for those of you watching at home. Uh, no doubt about it. There's a little bit of a uh, little bit of confusion with the timekeeping, but um, I think what what happens if there's a mistake in the first round, they make I, it up in the second. Or you have to stick with it. It's, I, I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to indict anybody, but I do know this: if you are in Las Vegas and you're playing Texas Hold'em or any card game, there's no such thing as a misdeal. So if you don't flip the card, if you don't pass the card before you um, turn the flop in Texas Hold'em, tough luck. So I, it is what it is. I understand that, but at the same time, granted, this is one of the first shows ever in West Virginia, and their athletic commission is new to the sport. But this is something that, that really yeah, should not be happening at this point. No, like I said, we're not going to make excuses or apologies, but uh, nice left hook. And another takedown for no. Cummins. And Cummings is coming with a sense of urgency. She understands that uh, she's got a point taken away in the last round, which could have made that a draw. That round, she's probably lost the first round. And um, here we go. So right now, my broadcast partner, Greg Kalikas, is getting a little bit of an explanation on the time. But it is what it is, so we'll keep calling this fight. Frosto is going to use that cage. She's going to try to take her left leg and swing it over the head and get an arm bar, but uh, Cummings is too slick for that. And those are to the side of the head. Mergliata watching closely. And yeah, without question. And now Frosto's head is pinned. Get 
I just saw George Gurdell just punch the cage. He was, he's not happy with what he's seeing right now. Yeah, a little frustration. There's still some time left in this fight though. And boy, you know, the way, the way Cummings is coming on here late in the round and the way Frostro seems to be struggling, if we had the true five minutes, five, five minutes, how big does that play? Yeah, it's, it's huge. And that's why it's so important to really be, you know, you, you gotta get that right. I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be critical here, but uh, no, yeah, especially three minute with, rounds and five minute rounds, that's a big difference. Right, especially with a fighter who, who, who may gas or who gets their, you know, can go 15 minutes at a frantic pace, that favors them and that plays Absolutely. into their strategy where they're gonna drag the fight out as long as possible knowing I can outlast you. There's no doubt about it. And don't forget there was a point deduction which, you know, the way this fight is going, that could be huge. And, and Frosto going for a guillotine attempt. And she might have it, it's deep. Half She's guard, it's in. gonna be awfully difficult to get. It's gonna be awfully difficult to get it from this position, but it's not impossible. And he, Mergliata's talking to Ashley Cummings. She's telling them she's okay. Yeah, and I, I think her elbow's too high. Yeah. She's, at this point, it's probably nothing more than a neck crank. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah, she's, she's gonna pop out here. Yeah, the elbow was just too high. 10 seconds, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but now that is gonna be a, we're at a three minute round. And now this just this, got very interesting. Yes, it did. A lot on the line here. Yeah. But a very competitive fight. Great fight by both ladies. And great sportsmanship here shown by both ladies. As it looks like we have an official decision. Let's send it up to Jazz. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of fighting, we go to the judges' scorecards for your winner. Judges Vincent Sinclair, Vincent Dudley, and Keith Peterson all score the fight 29-27. Your winner by unanimous decision, Ashley Smashley Cummings. Well, there you have it. Ashley Cummings' unanimous decision. So perhaps not as tight as uh, John and I saw, but nonetheless, a great performance by both young ladies. Congratulations, Ashley Cummins remains undefeated and continues to climb the ladder. Well, let's hear from your winner, Center Cage with John Sturmack. I'm standing here with your winner, Ashley Smashley Cummings, moving up to 8-0, very tough opponent. Before we get to you, let's talk about your opponent. How tough was she? I was so nervous to fight her. She has amazing stand-up. I was worried she was gonna catch me with a knee and knock me out or something. My game plan was to take her down and win on the ground. That's what I did. I didn't want to stand with her too much because I knew how dangerous she was standing. Anybody you want to thank tonight? Yeah. Everyone at St. Charles and May and Boggy Martial Arts. Thank you for helping me getting ready and always believing me. Thank you to my family. I know it's not easy to watch your daughter get punched in the face. Thank you to all my friends and coworkers that are very supportive. Thank you for everyone coming out and supporting women's MMA. Thank you. Well, I for one was very impressed with your submission defense. She looked like she tried to throw a lot at you in that first round, you defended it well. What's next for you? Uh, I'm two and pro now. Just keep accepting fights. My dreams to be ranked in the top 10 at 115. I'm not gonna stop till I get there. Well, we certainly look forward to having you back. Give it up for your winner, Ashley Smashley Cummings. More NAAFS cage fighting coming right up.